I am a woman in my early 50s, and my life took a different path due to the tragic loss of my parents in an accident when I was young. Thankfully, my maternal grandmother stepped in and became my guardian. She was a remarkable woman who ran a small cafeteria at the farmer's markets, and despite the challenges, she dedicated herself to ensuring that I was well taken care of while attending school. Although she couldn't attend events at school where a mother's presence was expected, she made certain that I didn't fall behind my friends. In fact, she went above and beyond, providing me with the best of everything, including packing my lunches generously with delicious treats. Thanks to her unwavering care, I sailed through school without any significant difficulties. While the absence of my parents created a sense of loneliness, I never lacked for anything else. Nevertheless, I wanted to alleviate my grandmother's burden, so I made the decision to pursue a major in food and nutrition at a junior college. Although my grandmother initially wished for me to attend a four-year university, I firmly believed that acquiring practical skills and entering the workforce sooner would be more beneficial. I didn't want to obtain a mere piece of paper in the form of a four-year college diploma while struggling to find employment like many others. Eventually, my grandmother relented, and I enrolled in college with a full scholarship. During my time in college, I dedicated myself to my studies. I worked diligently and managed to acquire licenses as a nutritionist, hygienist, and cook. These qualifications opened up various opportunities for me, and I am grateful for the knowledge and expertise I gained during my educational journey. I got each one successfully and became hired as a researcher at a food company. I was overjoyed that now with the money I earned, I could buy nice things for my grandma and not to have her struggle from working anymore. But my joy was short-lived. My grandmother suddenly became ill, and the doctor at the hospital diagnosed that she has stomach cancer. I really thought that the world came down overnight meant a situation like this. At that time, I was busy crying every day that I couldn't think straight. I, even so my grandmother calmly went to the orphanage where she sponsored, donated money and even sent over food and closed air. Grandma, that isn't important right now. We should think about your getting well and getting well soon. We don't even have enough money for ourselves, so why do you take care of others at a time like this? Don't talk like that. What's wrong with how we are? We still have enough money to live on and pay for hospital bills. That's enough. So don't be too greedy. The reason we have money remaining is for us to share with the others. Sandra, you must never forget that. My grandma ran her cafeteria all her life, and although she worked hard to earn money, she never stopped helping people in need. Although I knew the character of my grandma when she became sick, I didn't feel good about it still seeing that her will was firm. I thought that continuing to oppose her would make her feel more difficult, so I told her to do whatever she wanted and helped her. The operation went well and the prognosis wasn't that bad, so she got discharged from the hospital and went through chemotherapy well enough. However, three years later, she had a relapse and at that time she couldn't enjoy it and passed away. I didn't cry all through her funeral because I guess I couldn't feel it was actually happening. I was too busy taking care of the guests who came to the funeral and was distracted from trying to keep up with the funeral process, so I couldn't think straight after my grandma's ashes were stored at an hori and I returned home only then I sat in a corner of the empty room and sobbed all night long. Morning for my grandma. I terribly missed her. And I was also kind of scared that now I was completely alone in this world. I couldn't show it, so I worked hard in the company. But when I came home, I spent months in tears. I had been living like that for about six months. When I met a guy, he worked at one of our company suppliers, and I had seen him whenever he came over. I had a good impression of him, so when he asked me out, I didn't think he was so bad because I went through such a difficult time. I think I wanted someone to lean on. Also, he and I dated lightly, such as going to see movies or eating together a few times. Then one day he told me, I think I'm compatible with your personality. And we have similar hobbies, Sandra, we have been seeing each other so far, 
like friends without any pressure. But I want to see you now formally. I think we can now do that. But what about you? I said yes, without hesitation. As he said, I felt we were very compatible on many things. However, it bothered me that I was all alone. I, I didn't know whether he would continue to see me. After knowing that, after worrying about it, I decided to tell him the truth. What you said, you needed to tell me something serious, so you got me scared, but that's nothing. I like you for yourself, not including your family. It never even crossed my mind, so don't worry about on that account. If it matters to you, then my family isn't all good either. Then you're not seeing me taking into consideration of my family also, are you? That's how he reassured me, and I felt grateful for that. Even though we were seeing each other as a formal couple, we never had a big fight. He was very considerate and didn't tend to care about minor problems. More than a year had passed like that, and we naturally thought of marriage while we were talking about getting married. He told me there was someone I should meet. Then he introduced me to his aunt. His aunt had a lot of trouble with her legs, so she was confined to a wheelchair even so she was a gentle person with a very kind smile. When my aunt was young, she almost raised me. Both of my parents were always busy, and to be honest, they weren't interested in me because I was not as good as my older brother. When I was a college student, my aunt had a car accident and became confined to a wheelchair. She's really more like a parent to me. I wished his aunt well. When I greeted her, she held my hand tightly and said, I hope you'll take good care of our Howard. I'm not even a parent, so it's presumptuous of me to say things like this, but the more you get to know our Howard, you'll know better how great he is. What do you mean that you're presumptuous? Don't say that auntie. I felt that his aunt was a very special person to Howard. After that, I also met Howard's parents and his older brother. Everyone didn't like me very much, but I didn't hate it either. They weren't the happy to meet with me, but weren't unhappy either. I was expecting that I wouldn't be very well received, so I wasn't too upset. But the atmosphere between Howard's aunt and his parents was very different. Howard's mother openly asked me, how are you going to prepare for the wedding if you have no parents or any siblings? Do you have enough money saved up to cover it all? To be honest, it takes more than a penny or two for a wedding. I have to get my sons married properly and I don't intend to do it roughly, so I have to make sure of that before we move on. Mom, how could you say it like that? I don't know what a proper wedding is, but Sandra and I will do it according to what we can afford. I don't think the wedding is important, but how we live is what's more important. Then his father intervenes you. Bastard. What kind of talk is dad to your mother in front of a guest and your mom didn't say anything wrong to you guys? A wedding may be just a ceremony, but not to us. Isn't it a big event to show our family to others? If you say you'll do it your way, I won't let you do it, so I step forward. Yes, of course you feel that way. I understand everything. I think you don't have to worry about the wedding. There are some inheritances left by my grandmother and I'll try to fit it to your liking. You may not like everything mother and father, but still I can have a wedding without being ashamed of it. After saying goodbye, Howard kept saying sorry to me. Do not say that it's natural for parents. I'm alone, so I'm grateful that Day did not oppose me to the end. He reassured me. Don't be discouraged by that. Don't worry. After we get married, the two of us live together, not with our parents. After that, we prepare for the wedding without any major problems and finally got married. I wonder why his aunt didn't show up at the wedding. It turns out that his father and his aunt had different mothers. So they were a half-brother and a half-sister. My father-in-law kept ignoring his half-sister because she got divorced due to her inability to bear any children. But after being confined to a wheelchair, he wouldn't let her come to any of the family events. My husband was very sad when he told me that they are my parents, 
but there are times when I don't understand them because they dump on her for any problems that come up in the family. Yet exclude her from any good things happening in the family. They're too mean. I afforded him. Let us do even better to make up for that. I'll be good to her too. In fact, whenever I saw my aunt-in-law, she reminded me of my grandma. So my heart ached more for her. My aunt-in-law was also very helpful to other people in need. Like my grandma like making donations, sending food trucks to provide food directly to remote areas. So I wanted to do more for her. And during weekdays I would drop by her house to act as her talking pal. I became closer to her while also helping her by doing the house chores. On weekends, I was often called to be at my in-law's house. And since my mother-in-law didn't like me to talk about her half-sister-in-law, I went more often to see my aunt-in-law on weekdays. Then the complications from the aftermath of her car accidents got worse and she ended up in the hospital. I was headed to the hospital room after completing the admission procedure for my aunt-in-law while my mother-in-law was waiting and she called me over. Stay here for a while. We are busy talking about your older brother-in-law getting married right now. Why does she have to get sick at a time like this? Why does she have no sense and make people get uncomfortable, making it so inconvenient? She complained, so I told her not to worry. My husband also said it would be better if his family didn't interfere. If it weren't for you, they would have left it to me anyway. They would have told me to hire a caregiver and ask me to pay for it. They're the ones who think they are lucky that we are around. I'm sorry I made you see something so embarrassing like that. Don't say that. If we have to deal with it, we can do it. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm glad you're not like your mother and father. I asked my husband to take good care of his aunt together with me. His aunt's birth mother had raised and treated my father-in-law well as her stepson, but my father-in-law was insolent toward her, a stepmother who remarried his dad. However, when she died, my father-in-law practically took all of her money. My husband said that's why he's not very close to his parents. Ever since young, he was frail and did not do as well in school as his older brother so they never paid any attention to him like they did to his older brother, rather than his parents who only graded their offspring. He was cared more by his aunt who embraced him with love, I thought the same way as my husband. So I took care of my aunt's sickness, more tenderly, making every meal something good for her health, and took them to the hospital. My aunt-in-law loved my home, cooked meals for her and ate them well. She was too busy bragging about me to doctors and nurses. I thought she would recover well and be discharged, but maybe because her energy was already depleted, and when the weather turned cold, she ended up getting pneumonia and it got worse quickly. She died without ever getting up again. My husband and I were so sad that we didn't know what to do. I have been through this kind of thing, so I was able to handle it a little bit, but it was the first time for my husband and he took it hard. I forwarded my husband and prepared for the funeral since I had done it before. I recollected what to do one by one until the mortuary was prepared. My in-laws did not show once, but they showed up later only to greet guests and to be honest, I was very angry inside. Still, I couldn't show my anger in front of people, and my husband and I quietly did what we had to do. But as soon as the funeral was over, my in-laws made a fuss with the aunt's property. My aunt-in-law had said that she would donate all her property to a place that ran a food truck for the homeless, but my in-laws claims on their priority and contested that there was no will officially notarized by her, and they insisted it couldn't be given away. My aunt-in-law had a piece of land since her pre-marriage and a house as her alimony from her ex-husband and cash in the amount of a little more than two million. My mother-in-law who made a big scene arguing with the lawyer of my aunt-in-law, called and warned me just because you took care of her for just a little while during her last days. Don't you dare to ask for your share. Honestly, you should be grateful for the rest of your life, for our accepting you into our family when you were nobody as an orphan got that. I wasn't by your sister-in-law for any reward. I didn't even know she had that much money. 
but I think it's too much when you openly call me an orphan and telling me to be grateful for the rest of my life. Look at you. You were the type who could talk so well, how did you last this long? Without saying anything. Who said you could talk back to me? If you are a daughter-in-law, then act properly accordingly. She shouted, and my husband must have heard her and rushed in and retorted at her. It is that something you should say like that. My wife didn't say anything. She shouldn't have. If you are only going to shout about money, don't look for us anymore. I can't believe I gave birth to you myself, but you are so rude without any manners at all. Okay. I will see how well you two live without us. Then his father and his older brother joined in and took everything worth any money out of his aunt's house and left. My in-laws did not look for us since then, and my husband and I decided to consider our aunts have been our only family and just come forward at each other. One month later when everything has settled down, our aunt's attorney came to see us. I really struggled to try to keep this. He handed over a title to a piece of land. Our aunt told them that it was a piece of land. She had changed its title to our names. And when everything was settled with my in-laws to give it to us, since my father-in-law and mother-in-law knew how much assets she had and if she had given it all to us, they would be the type to use whatever means, including elongated estate court trials to take them away from us. Thus, she had prepared it in advance. Your parents do not know anything about this land. They will think that the property they took was everything, so there shouldn't be any problem. The land was located in another state, in a rural area, but it was in a sizable city, and we were surprised by its enormous size. My husband and I thought about what to do with the land, but we decided to leave it alone for now. My husband had a job at a company, so we had no problem making a living, and I was also looking for a job, but soon after I got pregnant, so I gave up looking. If I started a job, I would have to take a leave of absence shortly, so I felt I didn't want to be guilty of causing any inconveniences to the company. In my early trimester of pregnancy, I wasn't feeling very well. I nevertheless felt I should tell my in-laws that I was pregnant, so I called my mother-in-law, who answered my call, yelled at me. Why are you calling when you said that? You guys will live well by yourselves without us. Since we are well off, don't call us anymore. How senseless are you to get pregnant with a useless child when you can't even afford to take care of yourselves? Mother. I know you feel angry toward us, but you can't curse like that to an innocent child. We won't be contacting you for the last time either. No matter how much we may struggle with our lives. How could you curse a newborn like that? How could people like you and your husband have a kind person like your son and I hung up the phone? In the meantime, my husband's older brother married a woman from an affluent family, so my father-in-law and mother-in-law went golfing with their in-law's private club membership and busy traveling around resorts. I heard from some people I knew even so I didn't know my mother-in-law would say such horrible things about her grandchild. I completely gave up on my in-laws and my hearts, and as time passed, a beautiful daughter was born, and when my daughter was one year old, my husband said he wanted to start a business to run a store himself. I want to open a small food shop and form a professional cooking team later to focus on side dishes that can be easily cooked at home in the company no matter what. There are always things I don't like, so I thought I should give it a try myself. It's been several years since I conceived the idea, but I also had a little more to learn and since you were struggling to have our daughter, Claire, so I waited all this time in case in my were you, but I think I can do really well. Please help me too. If you are so prepared and confident, you should do it. Why did you wait on my account? Don't worry. Even if it may not go well at first, you'll learn that much. So my husband and I opened a food shop while promoting it. The two of us did food research recalling the food I made when I was nursing our aunt. I advised on nutritionally balanced health food as well as food for patients. Then the health food for patients received a surprisingly good response. Our store made a good impression to our customers that we make and sell healthy food. 
With word of mouth, the number of regulars gradually increased. One time when a regular customer told me that he was very unwell, I made soothing vegetable soup made from handmade beef consummate rather than using stocks impacted with tasty, mild side dishes, and personally delivered to the customer. It wasn't for money and I did it because I really cared as he was a good customer who always bought a lot of food from us and put in a good word to many other people. He thanked me so much and even had tears in his eyes, and he sent even more customers to our store. There were difficult times and there were moments of crisis, but thanks to such regular customers, our store had turned profitable. Little by little, my husband was able to form the cooking team as he had wanted. And apart from the take-home food shop, we ran a restaurant that used only organic healthy ingredients. We developed meals that were well received at a restaurant as meal kits. It took eight years for that to happen. My daughter became older, so I started working with my husband in earnest. My husband was in charge of the overall management of the business, and I worked with the cooking team, devoting my energy to develop more menus. As we're spread about our food and more people were looking for it. The company my husband had worked for offered to sell our food. My husband said he wanted to keep the quality by inspecting it himself. Instead, the company went through several reviews and negotiated with us. As a result, we were able to make a contract that reflected a lot of our opinions. It took another three years for that, and after 11 years have passed. Only then did the restaurants and meal kit businesses rooted firmly in their place. My husband made a small corner in a restaurant to sell them meal kits for the customers and set up an online shopping mall to sell a variety of meal kits. Then one day, a real estate broker came to see us as the land that my aunt passed down to us went into redevelopment zone. The land price was soaring. He said there was someone who wanted to buy the land and asked to sell it for 50 million. My husband and I said we would think about it. However, it wasn't long before unexpected people came to my husband's office. It was my husband's mother and his older brother. My in-laws found out not too long ago that we had received the land, and they said that they knew that the value of the land had gone up a lot. My mother-in-law looked around my husband's office and said kindly, how could you guys not say anything like that? Even so if you inherited property, you should have told us about it. How long were you going to keep it a secret? I was really surprised. Having said that, my brother-in-law said no matter how it was given to you both, isn't it a bit like passing your parents off like that this could be a moral issue? Isn't that right, Cynthia? Even if Howard wouldn't say, you should have said something, Howard. It's late, but I think it would be good to share a little bit with mom and dad, but my husband made a face that he was dumbfounded. All of you, mom, dad, and you took all of our aunt's property back then. But why did we have to talk about this? Honestly, when Cynthia was pregnant with our daughter Claire, did you even say one word to congratulate her? Well, mom said that we were not helpful in life yet even got pregnant with a useless child. So what are you asking for now? There's a moral problem with you, not with us. When he said it, my mother-in-law said it suddenly with her serve expression. Let's forget about what happened then. What is family? Isn't it family to do good things together and forget about bad things for each other? Don't be like this and let's think in a good way, honey, don't you think so too? Why all of a sudden do you call Cynthia honey? I remember. Well, I was stare when you told Cynthia for us to never contact you. You told us to live well by ourselves without contacting you again, but you came like this because now that you learned that we own a piece of valuable land, I can't believe a single thing you say. No matter how good it is. Mom, please stop and just leave both of you. He said coldly. Cynthia, I didn't think you were that way, but you are so cold because of you. Hasn't my brother Howard changed like this? Why do you talk badly about my wife? Get out of here, you people. If not, I will call the police. When my husband shouted, my mother-in-law took my hands and pled it. Don't do that and try to talk to your husband please. 
but we didn't even blink an eye. It turned out that my husband's older brother was forced into getting divorced by his wife for being incompetent, and my husband's mom and dad lost most of their fortune because of their bad investments. It was unfortunate for my parents-in-law, but I didn't think it was okay to give my aunt's land. My husband and I sold our land to a land developer that was introduced to us by a real estate agent. And we donated a lot to the place we in thought of donating before, after my in-laws visited and contacted us several more times. We're doing great. We decided to cut ties with certain individuals. Initially, we believed that our help wasn't necessary since both of them were capable of living independently. Moreover, my brother-in-law secured a job to sustain himself, and any surplus funds were invested in promising startups run by young entrepreneurs. Our businesses are thriving, and our primary focus now is selling meal kits online. Recently, we received news that my parents-in-law opted to live with their divorced son, who needed their support. Although we can't completely disregard their well-being when times become exceptionally tough, we don't feel that the present moment warrants our immediate involvement. Our business ventures are flourishing without encountering any significant obstacles, and my family is content and joyful. It feels as if we have weathered a tremendous storm, and many challenges have become distant memories. Every day, I make a personal commitment to contribute to the world as much as my husband, grandmother, and late aunt did. I strive to live by their examples and put their teachings into practice. I consider this to be their enduring legacy. Thank you for lending an ear to my story. I sincerely wish you good health and tranquility. I would appreciate your support, encouragement, and wise comments in the comments section. Your likes and subscriptions would immensely aid me. Have a splendid day ahead.